This episode is sponsored by Shutterstock.com. With over 20 million high quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use offer code GAMEBREAKER6. This episode is also brought to you by Audible. For a free 30-day trial and to receive a free audiobook, just head on over to audible.com slash GAMEBREAKER. GAMEBREAKER TV What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Legendary. I'm Mike Schaffnit, and coming up on tonight's episodes. Episodes? We're doing multiple tonight? I don't know. Three, coming up five. on tonight's episode. <laughs> Do we really need DPS specs? I don't think so. Are you linear? This line is linear, and this dungeon might be too. Alinka gets some uh, gets philosophical with Russian, and... Ooh, the arena tiebreak changes have landed. I think Olivia and I are going to get in a little bit of a fight about this tonight. We'll figure that out later. It's on. It's on. All that and more. But first, joining us from WoW Insider Zam and right here on Game Breaker TV, Olivia Grace. Hello. Hello, hello. I'm going to kick you, you, your ass. I'll you got your gloves on? Breaks. You got your gloves but on? I, I, sh I should. I have a crossbow in here still. <laughs> your crossbow Don't won't mess mean with any Earth. Your crossbow won't mean anything if I get the tiebreaker debuff. Right? Mess with her. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot you through the power of the internet. Wow. And right you guys me. know him. You love him, the host of Convert to Raid. <laughs> One the only pack rain. Hello. How's it going? And uh by by the way, Chef, we are the world of Warcraft. Are you the world of Warcraft? Well, Olivia and I are. So, I didn't see not, you though, so you've got I don't know Sonic if you're back there. For the record, that's <laughs> I do, I do. that's a mistake. All right, I got cut. Absolutely. Here's my theory. I got cut because I had branding behind me. I didn't have World of Warcraft stuff behind me, so they cut my video. Well, Should have yeah, thought ahead. Yeah. Yep, she's got branding. Right. Uh, all right. Well, first up this week, real quick. Uh, I think, you know, we were obviously talking about that certain video that showed up on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. Uh, you two actually were able to make it onto international TV and hit uh -huh. it big. Uh, uh -huh. you, guys were, you guys were lip syncing. <laughs> now, you guys really I do was, what you... I was, we were totally singing. We were totally... I was, that's I was what we sound like. We were totally singing. Out, yeah. They cut out your audio beautiful. pack because it was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably true. I was singing, though. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He's definitely not singing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but if you guys haven't seen this, uh, you've got to go check it out. Now, I'm not going to bring it up because the last time we brought it up on After Dark, we actually got into some copyright trouble. So if you guys haven't checked it out, it is up on Game Breaker TV. Uh, so yeah. head over there and check it out. Yeah. But uh, first, guys, how does it feel? You're, you're, you're international superstars now at this point. <laughs> I've How's barely been able to leave the house for the paparazzi. You've right. broken yeah. through the internet and, and made your TV debut. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on here right now. My, my 15 minutes of fame is actually uh, 10 seconds, I think. Is yeah, exactly. For that. <laughs> so. I mean, no offense, but those clips are short. Like, if you actually look at them, it's they like were. three seconds of fame. But I was right next to Jimmy Fallon and, uh, and I was above uh, Felicia Day. So I thought that was kind of that was kind of nice. I saw I, I saw some people tweeting that you were on top of Felicia Day. That was probably a whole other <laughs> yes, argument. Right on top of Felicia Day. But I can't say that. Other people can. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, real quick before we get into the show, I want to tell you guys about an awesome uh, giveaway that we're doing over on Facebook. If you guys head on over to facebook.com slash gamebreaker, uh, right up here at the top, you'll see this awesome little screenshot giveaway button. That's going to take you over to our screenshot giveaway page. We're giving away a Razor Naga to the grand prize winner, as well as five runner-ups. We'll get an awesome Game Breaker TV shirt. It's super, super easy. 
All you guys got to do is submit a screenshot. And from there, it's community voting. Uh, best screenshots going to walk away with a Naga, but, uh, you know, it could be a really cold day in hell. And <laughs> well, you know, that nice. could be the winner. That's there nice. You go. I like yeah. that. Yeah, good job. That's Screenshot cool. competition. So, so if you guys really like a cold day in hell, head on over. Check out the most recent. I mean, come on, a cold day in hell. One vote, really? Go give us some love. It's only got one vote. Give it, give it a nice little heart vote. Uh, but head on over there. We're doing a, we're doing an awesome giveaway. So go check us out on there. All right, on to some actual news. Um, lead systems of, uh, designer Greg Ghostcrawler Street. Greg Ghostcrawler Street. It's like a, it's like, it's like I grew up on go, go on Ghostcrawler Street. I don't know why I haven't ever made that joke before. It's just the way that I said it sound sounded so like that was a street I grew. Anyway. Um, all right. So, uh, he's been doing obviously what he does best and he's been talking it up on Twitter. So we've got a few tweets from him, um, where he's talking about class design. So first off, actually that is not going into the player. So let's no, wait, I can't put it there. That won't work. All righty. Uh, I'll figure that out here in a second. Let's go back here. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. He he responded to a player uh, who asked about whether every class needs a viable DPS spec. He came forward and said it doesn't. You could design the game without it. Overall, we reacted to feedback from the community that they want viable DPS specs. You could say priests are just healers, and you uh, and you could have buffer or support classes with low DPS. Just a different design. So first off, uh, obviously Greg is definitely, he's not saying that they're going to just straight up remove shadow priests from the game here, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, that would, that would be like the, to the umpteenth power overreaction. <laughs> but, uh, what do you guys think? You know, w would it be okay for classes to exist without DPS specs? If it's the been game so were, long. If, if the game were actually built to support that, then sure. But I mean, as it stands right now, uh, the way that it's been built over the last uh, however many years, eight years, nine years, whatever the hell it is. Uh, but over time, this has become a thing where if you're in the current expansion, you need to have a, a DPS spec. You just have to. I play a resto druid. I can't resto my way into all the loots of, uh, of raiding unless I you know, go through, do dailies and weeklies and whatever other kinds of stuff. And for that, for the most part, you need to have a DPS spec. Yeah, for sure. And I don't think, I don't know. I, I, I think it's, it could, it works in other games, but it does. I don't think it could work in WoW at this point. I think, you know, if they, if they started again, would it be an interesting prospect to have classes, which didn't do DPS, which did something else entirely? I don't know. I think, I think, I think obviously then people who do, do play pure classes, so pure DPS classes. So would people then play a pure healer class, a pure tank class? Possibly. But I think, like Pat says, the design of WoW at the moment is just not sympathetic to that sort of thing at right. all. It's, it would be a bit crazy. I mean, it's been a fairly uh, regular complaint amongst the community during Mr. Pandaria that players who, who, who want to just sit down and heal or, or maybe just want to tank are having a really hard time doing that. So do you, do you think that it's fair for, for them to kind of pull the reins back and be like, you know what? This is a tank class. If you don't want to tank, roll a different class. Yeah. You think it's fair? Yeah. I don't know. I think I think it's I th definitely think the complaint is fair. Like people have people have been complaining about that a lot, and it seems like mists more than perhaps cataclysm. And I think that's just due to the lack of five man content. Like in mists, if you like in Fat and Cata, if you wanted to grind out your valor just by healing, you totally could. I mean, I I I had no on my shamans. I had no other specs than resto. I had resto PvP and resto PVE. And I, if I wanted to get Valor, I just went through and ground it out by doing dungeons and by doing raids. And that was all I was looking for, was the gear and the Valor that I got from raids and dungeons. And then obviously the PvP stuff, which again, I got from healing. Healing in arenas, healing in raids of battlegrounds. And with Mists, you can't really do that. Particularly early on in Mists, you were really unable to do that. And they've added no further five-man content. And I mean, yes, you could argue that scenarios are a thing there. And like, oh, well, you can you can totally tank or heal in heroic scenarios. And yeah, you totally can. <laughs> but do you need to? Like, I mean, is it, I do kind of feel like if you've kind of been pushed into having, you kind of have to have a DPS off spec. Like you were saying, Pat, you have to have a DPS off spec in order to play the game right now. And not everyone well, wants that. Well, it does seem like they've lightened up a, a little bit on, on that whole aspect because, I mean, now you can, 
do for the weeklies in in uh, the barons you can actually be a healer and still get loot yeah um, that's true. and and you can do hero heroic scenarios with a group and be a healer and be just fine uh but yeah i mean the the five man content is really kind of uh the barrier or was the barrier throughout the first uh, couple of patches which is quite a long time uh so so in order to do in, in order to get more chances at loot you have to do dailies, and dailies require that you kill stuff. And yes, <laughs> yes, you yes, you can go in a, in a group, I, I guess, and be a healer and be taking. okay. But I mean, you know, the 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 real uh, part of that is that that just doesn't happen a lot. So yeah. I I think that you have to have a DPS spec, and and if you want to be just a resto or just a tank or whatever. Um, Good. Sorry. <laughs> well, Sorry. I, think, I, feel like, I think tanks have an, an easier time of it than healers. Like you can yeah. definitely quest as a tank. Like you can do it. You just, you know, you in order to it maintain the same pace as a DPS. Yeah, exactly. It's slower. And I mean, yes, you can pull like twenty of the mobs or something ridiculous like that, but you, if you pull twenty, you die. So don't do that. But right. you can pull large numbers of mobs and kill things more at a time as a tank than you can perhaps as a DPS. But like unless you're a disciplined priest. Good luck doing those as a healer. Right. Well, and, and, you know, it's like the last time that I leveled up uh, as a healer specifically was uh, for the monk. I went up mm. as a mistweaver and, and especially... Uh, oh, how were they for that, actually? You know, it wasn't, it wasn't terrible, I guess. It wasn't as terrible as trying to do it as a resto druid. <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, uh, but, you know, mistweavers, they get a little bit of DPS, so it's not quite as bad, mm. and they will never die. So there's that. Yeah. So it was kind of more like a more like a tank, uh, going through doing dailies, uh, than than a healer going through dailies. So that was yeah. that was tolerable. But still, I switched to a DPS spec when I went and did did dailies after a while because I just couldn't stand it. Yes. Yeah, so obviously the, the here, world. Like... Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I was just going to say the same here. You know, I started off thought, well, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I leveled I leveled a shaman through just doing dungeons, which is definitely not the most efficient way to level, but not a huge questing fan. And so that's what I did. And I then thought, oh, okay, I'm just going to go and do this little bit here as Resto. And oh my God, Resto Shaman are not renowned for their DPS. Fair point. But it was terrible. It was so bad. And it's just like, okay, this is how the game's designed. But I really love to not have to do this, like all this daily stuff, yada, yada. It's just like, oh God, I don't want to DPS. I want to heal. So, so it sounds like your guys' frustration and, and, and concern comes from most questing. And World of Warcraft, uh, d the questing doesn't end when you hit max level because of, obviously, as you guys yeah. mentioned, daily quests. Right. So right. Uh -huh. with that in mind, is there anything that they could do to the existing design that, that would make it so that no one really needs a DPS spec? Or, or is just the way that the game has been created pigeonhole it into, into this, this fact that everybody needs to be able to DPS? Group play is the thing that decides it, really. I mean, that's that's the one way that they can include tanks and healers uh, in a Pat, meaningful way. Pat, I do LFR. To, I don't want to play with other people, things. all right? <laughs> <laughs> we can discuss that later, mean. Mike. We, we can really talk about that Doesn't later. Doesn't play well with to. others. That might no, happen. but I mean, but if you want to be a resto, especially, or, or a tank, you know, you need those group uh, environments. And yes, LFR is one way to do it, but they could they could try to redo it but it's it's such a tangled thing right now i mean if you go back and, and you're like okay well let's correct everything so we can all do this as group content all of the leveling and everything in in miss of pandaria and all you'd be spending resources oh, yeah. uh, just i mean left and right and you wouldn't have anything left to to build uh, 6.0 yeah, I don't think it's like I definitely don't think it's necessary to go back and completely redesign the game to allow everyone to do stuff as healers. I think it's just it, it would be nice to provide more alternatives. And like Pat says, they've gone down that route away from the daily side of things in uh, five point three, right. and hopefully further more of that coming. Um, but they just need to make sure that there's like the five man option is more available and more viable. And just you know, let us do what we want to do. Let us hit like. Sure, you can heal like you can heal your way up from naught to eighty pretty quickly. Apart from well, naught to ten, ten to eighty, let's say, and you know then then you're away. But up, up at max level, the daily questing and all of that sort of stuff. Just give us alternatives. That's all. Simple. 
All right, so another uh, another tweet that we actually kind of found kind of interesting here was the discussion about homogenization. I don't know if I said homogenization. That right. Homogenization. Homogenization. Good job. <laughs> Uh, I can't even shorten that word because then I'll just look really no, bad. No, you can't. No, uh, no you can't. So, so someone tweeted Greg basically saying that homogenization is uh, good for core things like interrupts, but is bad for more iconic abilities. And he responded by saying, that's actually what we aim for, but we don't always nail it 100%. So with that in mind, first up, uh, what do you guys think? Do you, do you think that they're doing a decent job of homogenization word of the day uh, <laughs> because there there have been a, there have been a few complaints that uh that you know since mists uh it, it kind of took class fla flavor away and 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 do you think that this is kind of a fair outlook to have tricky I, and i know that like particularly at the beginning of mists shaman were very upset about that totem Ooh, <laughs> they were so right sad about that i was thrilled i was absolutely thrilled to have my buffs not attached to a stick that you could kill particularly in pvp then you have to dispel it just go and kill a stick and it was done but great think... <laughs> wonderful that was the best part about shamans i know let's go kill some sticks but yeah <laughs> and i think there's other things like i'm trying to think off the top of my head like paladin auras like the devotion aura crusade, like all of those auras that you used to have, I think yeah. they've gotten that you just, yeah, your seals have replaced your auras effectively as a paladin. And I don't know, like whether, like how much does this stuff contribute to class flavor? And is it, does it really matter? Does it really matter if they simplify a class a little bit by making you use no, no longer use auras and seals instead? And, and actually it... they made the shaman much more complicated with that totem change. Not that they're not. And, and that's the thing is, is, it's it's really this weird balance because they they like to say that they're they're simplifying the classes a lot of big a lot of people make the argument of look at the talent trees they used to be this giant thing and ever since i think it was wrath they get smaller and smaller and smaller but mm. as you said just because they're simplifying one aspect of it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not going to get complicated right. in a completely well, different aspect and and the thing is that you know especially when you reach level cap I mean, how many buttons are you pushing? We're, I, I'm pushing more buttons than I ever have before. You know, yeah. I mean, because there are so many, there are so many spells in the spell book, and you know, it, it. I'm sure that it gets tough from a from a class building standpoint to come up with something new, something unique to a certain class, and so everything kind of starts having a similar flavor, even though it's called something different. Uh, mm. It starts having a similar flavor, and it may not be exactly the same, but it's close. You know? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, like most healers have the three heal model. That's that's an example of right. the same thing. Like most healers have the sort of, you know, big, big, fast, really expensive, small, slow, cheap, and then the sort of other one. Right. You know, right. You know what I want to see more of? I think Josh, who's in chat, will agree with me. More skill shots. Give yeah. me more skill shots. <laughs> sure. Yeah, fair I, I actually skill like them. Cool. Like, I haven't ever played a hunter, uh, and I believe it's their 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 glaive toss that you can glyph uh, and it I becomes think a skill it's shot. Power shot. Power, power shot. shot. Power shot. Power, power shot. That's a skill shot. Power um, shot is a skill shot. I. It is. You know what? I I don't necessarily know if if skill shots lend themselves very well to three D uh like open world MMOs, but I like them uh in in all of the mobas that I play, and and mm. and I think a lot of people will agree that that you know when th that doesn't that that makes the complexity. Uh, something entirely different and it's no longer complex because of what it's doing to your class it's complex because you're you're adding the user and the player element not only uh, but you're also adding your opponent's intelligence level to your ability so sure. like that yeah. that could be something that, that brings a little bit of flavor back to a class and, and I think for PVE models especially that works really well um, that is where you can kind of set yourself up a little bit more and and uh, really make sure that you're you know, focus on what you need to do. PvP, it gets a little tricky because, I mean, you're running around, always trying to duck behind corners and, you know, all kind of stuff. Maybe that would be, maybe it would be just as good. I don't know. Olivia, maybe you would be able to uh, chime yeah, in on that one. Yeah, I don't know. That would be, it certainly would be tricky. But I think it, if, if it was to be used heavily in PvP, it would have to be very high reward. Like it would have to, whatever it was, would right. have to hit like a train because it's going to be a lot more difficult to land it in pvp than it is in pv against an ai an ai thing um so yeah i think but i think it would be like it it works in league of legends 
So maybe it would be a cool thing. Maybe it would be fun. But then League of Legends has less line of sight obstacles. I right. right. <laughs> so there is that. Where's Where's my my Dota battleground, Blizzard? Where is it? You teased oh. it at BlizzCon. Oh, I've been waiting. Oh, they They've been, yeah, Come on. we've been waiting. It was it was Come data on. mined as well. It was data mined a little while back. Um, defense of the alehouse. Do you see what they did there? Do you, Dota. Do you see? What they, do you see? <laughs> oh, Mike Schaffner, you're so clever. I knew but yeah, it. They, <laughs> they data mined it a little while back, and you know everyone got very excited. I got very excited, and then it's yeah, it's never materialized. And it's like, it's it, because it's defense of the alehouse, I kind of feel like it has to come during Mr. of Pandaria. If it's coming at all, I guess I'll just rename it defense of the something else. But yeah, I wear Defense is that? of the aspects. Come on. Ooh, clever. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get, let's get back on topic because I don't know. I don't even know. How, I, yeah. It's my fault that it came up, but I don't even remember why I brought it up. Uh, Greg actually goes on to talk about uh, this topic, saying that, that tanks. Uh, or specifically about tanks. He says that they're constantly getting requests to buff some tanks because they lack the tools that others have. So that's a fair statement. I, I think, in, in, especially when you look at tanks, so you're obviously talking PvE and raids. Um, hmm. DPS homogenization is a little bit better because there's there's more coming to the table. But tanks, you are at a little bit of a disadvantage because if you, you only bring two. So if you bring a druid, and yeah. a warrior, but you need what the Death Knight brings. You're in a little bit of a a, a bind, uh, per se. So, what do you guys think about that? Do you think that tanks deserve to be a little bit more homogenized? <laughs> You're doing well with that word, by I'm the do, way. I just want to. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> I I think that there's. I think that there needs to be a certain um, a certain. God, I, can't, I can't even think of the word now that now homogenization is just going through my mind now. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's all that it is. No, homogenization. Uh, but there, needs to, there needs to be a certain uh, playing field that every, every single tank can reach um, so that everybody is expected to be able to do this, this, and this. And as long as they can do those three things well, or, or however many, um, then anything else should be fine. But uh, we're seeing that that's not necessarily the case all the time. So uh, it, you know, as they do class balance and, and, and try to work out the tanks, um, that it, it's kind of interesting and, and it's, it's, it seems like they're struggling a little bit with, with mm. tanks just in general. Yeah, definitely. I think there's def there's definitely sort of, I can understand the complaint. I mean, I personally, like, I like that there's different, like that different tanks do things different ways that DKs are so different to other tanks and that, you know, druids and high on the dodge of pallet. It, I think it's cool. I think it's fun until we get into a situation where actually my tiny little 10 man very casual ray group has got all the wrong tanks for a fight and then i'm exactly. like god they just right. need to homogenize this already and i don't think it's as much <laughs> of a problem for bigger for bigger groups for bigger guilds than i that i belong to but certainly for us we've had to, like fortunately our main tank has all uh well, three of the four types of three three of the five types of tank and our off tank is the other one so we do have them all covered, but they're not all equally geared. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of, it makes it tricky for smaller groups. But then on the other hand, does that mean that homogenization is the answer? Or should it just be workable with the wrong tank? I don't know. And I think as long as you can accomplish certain, certain goals, I mean, they should really kind of lay out what the, those goals are. And as long as you can reach those different goals for all the different uh, classes of tanks, then you should be able to clear you know, 95% of the encounters. Let's yeah, say. absolutely. So here's a real question, though. Does it really matter if different classes feel the same to play? Because if, the, if we go to that extreme where every class feels the same, people will obviously have the argument of, well, then why not just make a tank class, a DPS class, and a healer class? So does it matter if they're different? Does it matter if they're the... I don't know. I think I don't think that every class should feel the same to me. I kind of preferred it back when, like, partic again, talking about healing here, when you had more specialized roles as healers, like you had, like, you know, the paladin was the tank healer that, you know, they were really, really good at that, but they weren't that great at other stuff. And, you know, shaman were kind of swing healers, and you had healers that were much better at A, like, druids were way better at, like, raid healing. I, I kind of prefer that. But then on the other hand, like we were just saying, for smaller groups, you've got all the wrong healers. That's right. a bummer. So right. <laughs> I can totally see why they did it. But I personally, 
like from a purely personal perspective, not from a, I think this is a good idea perspective. I liked it better when it was more split out and when the different classes had different roles. Of it. Now, do you think that that might uh, be in part because they kind of went away from, I mean, they didn't really go away from the 25 man model, but they started not paying as much attention to the 25 man model. And be. so then they started going towards the 10 man model and, and, and opening it up. And maybe that is what kind of sparked all of this where, Hey, you know what, if we're going to do this, we better make sure that um, healers have everything in their toolkit that they need to, to be able to, uh, you know, fix different situations. And so then they became kind of more uh, homogenized mm -hmm. and, uh, and maybe that was kind of the start of it. And, and, you know, for DPS classes, I think it's a little bit different um, because for, for my DPS, I end up setting my bars the same way for pretty much every class that I play, for every DPS class that I play. You know, I have my dots set up in one area, then I have my big swings in another area, and yeah. then I have my next thing, and, you know, I have, like, my finishing moves in a different area, yeah. and I just keep on setting it up like that, and it feels kind of the same. It all feels very familiar. So for a DPS spec to be, uh, to kind of play the same, that's how I set it up. That's how I set it up every single time. So here's know. the thing with the, the, the problem is, is, you know, when, when we look at, we want individual, like we want our classes to be um, it, unique and individual and not all the same. We're looking at it on a singular level, but as, as we've kind of talked about here, as soon as you enter a group scenario and suddenly your healers are out of place or your tank doesn't offer what you need, you run into the problem. But why don't they potentially go back to them? And I never understood why they took out the Paladin Charger quest, the Warlock Dreadsteed quest, those little flavor pieces yes, could be yeah. perfect amounts of sprinkles to keep, make the classes so that they all have the same stuff. They all have the same, you know, interrupts and, and same style. But if you can make the class a little, feel a little bit more unique with additional like things to do because you chose that class that are tailored to that cl uh, class, make, make, make the, 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 the rogue dagger quest just a part of being a rogue and then people will feel a little bit more like unique in being a rogue i think i think that could really bring yeah. some flavor back to each other. I, I remember i remember something about green fire <laughs> mm. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea that sounds like a great idea let's do that <laughs> yeah, with every class should. no but they should. of course they should. <laughs> <laughs> We've of course, I <laughs> right, exactly. Hey, let's let's make more work for Blizz right now. What do you say? Yeah, get let's every, every class. class and let's every class right needs a legendary now. that's completely unique that has <laughs> yeah. their own individual <laughs> quest line. For, for five point four, every class is going to be getting their own little legendary piece. Wouldn't that be great? Oh, that'd be awesome. But then, but then every class gets a different piece. But if you get a group together right. with all classes together, you, you can combine it into the like <laughs> ultra epic legendary. <laughs> It's the ultra mega mega man. Yeah. Like, oh, that'd be awesome. There and you, then you go. go around and the real and but, then, but then who gets the ultra mega legendary? <laughs> now you got to divide it amongst your group. <laughs> Maybe it's just another player. Maybe it's an 11th right. player in your right. raid. Hey, right. Josh, I got a question for you. I know you're out there. Does that solve your legendary problem? Can we do that? Let's you do you that. got the poll. Let's Make go. it happen. All right. <laughs> Uh, now, this is kind of relevant to some class changes we've, uh, we've been kind of seeing over on the official forums. And we normally don't discuss class changes on Legendary, but these have a little bit of a wider implication. So, Warlocks have had their nerf to, to a fun toy that they've kind of had in various iterations since Mist of Pandaria, which is Kill Jaden's Cunning. Now, that's their, their ability that lets them cast while they're moving. So, um, it's been changed a lot, almost every patch since the expansion launched, and it's taken kind of a little bit of a nerf. Uh, in, in patch 5.4, followed by a buff. So, Liv, what exactly is going on, uh, and, and why was it changed in the PTR? Okay, I don't or know exactly what's changed? going on. Yeah, I don't know exactly what's going on, <laughs> but <laughs> what they initially said was they took away, um, it was basically it was a passive effect that snared you, so it slowed you down, uh, and allowed you to cast everything on the move all the time. And they decided that that was too strong, and basically the reason behind it seems to be that they... Um, it's a talent, so one of three talents, and you've got Archimon's Vengeance and Mana Ross Fury, I think, off the top of my head, is the other two options. Yeah. Sounds and right. Everyone was taking Kill Jaden's Cunning, and so it, it was just too strong, and they're, like, they're trying to get rid of cookie cutter, cookie cutter builds with this system. So Kill Jaden's Cunning being the sort of go-to choice was a problem. 
So they nerfed it. They made it like an on like an on use effect rather than a passive effect, basically. So it was off the it was off the global cooldown, so you, and you could actually cast it during another spell. Um, but they, they that was not not taken that well by the warlock community, she says diplomatically. No. <laughs> you mean a class got nerfed and they weren't vocal about it? I know. That would be the day. <laughs> I, it was, it, yeah, exactly. And so then they actually went and they, like, the current iteration um, makes it passive again and allows warlocks to cast their filler spells. So um, Shadow Bolt, Incinerate, and the other one. Well, moving. <laughs> what is the other one? Chat room will know. Um, I don't know. Shadow Bolt, Incinerate, and the other one. And that's what I'm going to stick with for now. Uh, while moving, but everything else requires a cast time. So you have to so stand still for everything else. So it refined it a little bit. It's kind of, uh, you know, targeting. Obviously, it, it was this cookie cutter spec that everybody was taking because it was yeah. so powerful. Now they're miss basically, they, they took, obviously, they took all the power away. But now they're like, okay, well, how do we make it work the way that it used to? But only within certain parameters that let us control it a little bit more, which maybe make the other ones uh, a little bit more yeah. useful. Exactly. Um, so would you, would you say, uh, we said this is kind of applicable to, to what we were talking about before. And, and, and that's because one of the big arguments here is that players have, uh, have, that they, they, they kind of brought up hunters, um, and, and that they can cast <laughs> while moving. So warlocks should yeah. be able to cast while moving. Right. Um, <laughs> What? Everybody should cast while what? moving. Yeah, that's, everybody that's, everybody should be able to. If right. one class can do it. DPS can cast can while moving. It. They can poke and run around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if one class class can do it, that just means that every class should be able to. This is kind of, like what we were talking about before. Like Players want homogenization when it's a cool toy that they right. like. So yeah, okay, let's just make everyone able to completely cast their full rotation while they're moving. Fantastic. Let's do that. That would be awful. Like, no. Like, you can't do that. That's just silly. I, here's yeah, my thing. I, 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 go, ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I was just going to say, here's my thing with it. You know, the, the question is, should casters be able to do their job on the run? But the the problem, I, I'm melee, and I, I rolled a mage, and I've rolled a feral druid. Typically, the mage always puts out higher DPS because I can just find a place, plant there, and, 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 and granted, mm. I know maybe these people are talking specifically for PvP, and I'm referring to PvE, but like, I don't know, like, even in PvE, I feel like, mages have such like shatter combos or ridiculous amounts of dps i know okay frost mages can can ice lance on the move um I, casters typically when i'm trying to get across this casters typically have higher dps than than say a melee class especially because melee classes have the added pressure of of having to position themselves with the target and yeah. keep up with the target don't they yeah exactly and you know that's that, and that's why casters should have a pen. They shouldn't just be able to, you know, just do what, exactly what they want and just run around free casting. Like ta casters have it way easier already. It's easier for them to target switch. It's easier for them to maintain contact with the target. No casters, oh. no. Well, wasn't the deal with the uh, with the talent that they were going to be changing it so that it wasn't a good option if you were not on the move? So if you're not on the move a lot during an encounter, you actually don't want to get this talent because. The other ones are going to be a little bit more viable in in mm. different aspects. So if they can do something like that, where they make where they make it a choice, where they make it a real choice for you, and say, okay, well, if you make this choice, you can cast on the move, but you're going to be sacrificing some DPS, and you're going to be sacrificing something else that is really cool. Yeah, that you may and want. That's what, that's yeah. what this whole this whole new talent system was was supposed to be around. It wasn't like any talent right. was supposed to be one specific choice it was supposed to be hey are you in an encounter that you got to move a lot take this the, the if not the, take the problem this. the problem is is that there are so many people out there crunching the numbers on every little thing that they put out that it ends up becoming it ends up not becoming a choice anymore and then they go well the best choice is this for this particular situation you want to go but, with this but blizzard has always come out and said there is always going to be an optical spec uh, an optimal spec for everything Always, oh, sure. but I yeah. think I think sure. the way that they try to design this uh, again, it will will speak from well, actually both PvP and PVE. From PVE, I think it's this fight. This is your talent setup. The next right. fight, yeah. this is your talent right. setup, forcing you to kind of change based on your environment. And I think the same could be said for PvP because oh, I'm fighting against a rogue. Well, I want this talent yeah. setup. Oh, I'm fighting against a mage. I want this. And that's kind of the 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 theory they've embraced for for all of this. So I think making that 
trying to to cut a, a talent that's just like that is the talent is is yeah. follows up with the design that they've had for all of Mr. Pandaria. Absolutely. Right. Yep. I would agree. Pretty much. All right. <laughs> all right. So last up today, uh, last up from Twitter today, rather, uh, there was a brief conversation about the structure of the upcoming patch 5.4 Siege of Orgamar. So there have been some fly throughs that have come out already and showing us the interior of the section of the raid that's basically goes underneath Orgamar, which was awesome. Like, I just want to say, yeah. like at first I was like, oh, I, this is great. Like, I'm just going to walk through Orgamar and, and, and I've seen this. Show me something new. And then as soon as they went into the cleft yeah. of shadow, I was like, oh, yeah. like, oh this right, is going right. to be so cool. Like, Whoa, he built an underground an underground thing underneath the rage fire. Wow. So, okay, man, that's pretty so awesome. Good. Yeah. yeah. And I was, I was kind of disappointed as well that it wasn't in the streets of Orgrimmar because I thought that would have been kind of cool. But. But maybe, isn't, maybe it'll isn't, turn out that there's some sections there. Isn't isn't Garrus's, Garrus's throne room like in that first building in Orgamar? I was wondering, yeah. I was like, how can yeah. there really be a siege? Because it's like gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna really? walk in the front gate and then be right to, to, to How the, long is this siege? Listen, going he's to he's take? retired he's retired to his bedroom at the bottom Let's of bring the back everybody's <laughs> it's totally right. fine. Let's he's bring his, back he's in his robe and he's yeah. just <laughs> kicking back with a beverage. He's ready for you. Don't worry about it. We've got guards on along the way. Put on his robe and wizard hat. Let's bring back everyone's favorite model, the Argent Crusade, the Argent Tournament. You just stand in a circle yeah. and it's just boss fight, boss fight, boss fight. Yeah, absolutely. That's what they're going to do. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. All right. So <laughs> we all agree. It's, it looks like it's going to be a really cool raid uh, art wise oh, yeah. and, and from what's there. But um, Ghostcrawler responded to a question that was uh, a little bit concerned about its linearity. And he responded to say, to be clear, it's not super linear. We want to make future raids super more non- like what did I say? Oh, it's I said not super non-linear. Non uh, not super non-linear. So does that mean is, is that a double <laughs> negative? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that is a double negative. Yes. So it's super uh, linear. We want to make future <laughs> raids more like BWD and Olduar in terms of linearity. Even though that not super non-linear. <laughs> no, I think that, what he's trying to say I, is I that it, there's wrong, some choice. But, there's yeah. some choice. It's not going to be Throne of Thunder, you know, just straight ahead shooter. It's going to be, no, guess what? You're going to have a couple of choices here and there, and mm. uh, you're going to, have some, going to have some fun with it. So, I so like first that. off, with, with the fly through that we saw, um, what were your guys' impressions? Did, did you feel like it was going to be a straight shot dungeon, or did you feel like there were open uh, choices to, I'm going to go clear boss A, or I'm going to go clear boss B? There definitely look like there are some clear choices along the way that um, you're going to have to make as far as uh, do I go right or do I go left? Uh, and then there's some open spaces, too, that they could do some really fun stuff with. Uh, it just kind of depends on on how those bosses kind of lay out. Uh, but, yeah, it, it looks like there's going to be um, quite a number of opportunities to be able to select uh, your path, your own path, yeah. which is kind of cool. Yeah, definitely. I think it certainly it certainly looks like that. I don't think it's... I don't think it's going to be quite as sort of like nonlinear as you had the option to with Firelands, where you could really sort of like finish off those bosses in kind of whatever order you felt like. Um, but it's yeah, it's more like where you just got some options. So if you find yourself in that situation where you're just hitting a roadblock with one boss, you can just be like, all right, we'll try this one for a few weeks, see if we can kill it, get some more gear, and then come back to the one that we were struggling with. Um, but yeah, I, I think yeah, I don't think it's going to be like Firelands, but I think it's going to be more like you know open than Throne of Thunder, which frankly is good. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, didn't didn't they come out and and basically say just before the Throne of Thunder that that super linear raids were going to be a thing of the past? Yes, I was actually. Yeah. I mean, it was I was sat at Games even at Gamescom 2012, just August 2012, and while the beta was up, they were sort of saying, "Oh yeah, you know, we're never going to do a real linear raid again." We understand that people did not like that, and and then it was just like, "Oh hey, Throne of Thunder, lol." <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs> didn't, didn't Ian say to you, like, was it your interview, Pat, where he said that it, oh, it just kind of turned out that way? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was not necessarily intended to be a super linear thing. He said like, that the oh, lore, slipped. he said that the lore and the story of the, of the dungeon kind of led him down that path and, and, uh, and, and his team. Uh, so, you know, it, it wasn't necessarily intended for that, but then it ended up being that. And I think that a lot of people were like, where is the option? of yeah. doing something different other than tortos for yeah. an hour and a half or whatever. So, you know, it's like, so I think that people were, were kind of, um, 
miffed by some of that, and uh, Blizzard definitely heard them. <laughs> yeah. So, Again. so what's the problem <laughs> with linear raids anyway? We've talked a little bit about this. We talked about this with Squishy. He is in support of linear raids because it's for hardcore raiders at the top of the top is hard to really uh stack up your progress against the other uh groups based on you know mm. points and and where they've killed and where they're at so we know the difficulties with linear raids um for for the top end but outside of that is is there anything else that the general community should be uh aware of in, in terms of why linear is is kind of the a no-no for the other 99 percent of the raiding community uh you know other than those the top one percent they love linear stuff. They love to just uh, bash out, you know, boss after boss after boss, and just know where everybody else is sitting at. And if if they're on if they're on Tortos and we're on Megara, then we're we're beating them. So we're you know feel comfortable with our timing and and our and our strat and all this kind of stuff. The rest of the guys they don't care about that. Yeah, they, exactly. they, they just, just want to down bosses, you know. Yeah. They just want to have fun with their friends. So, That's it. and just to just to correct Mike, that was Trekkie, not Squishy. Yeah, I know. We <laughs> love, we love I read that right now. But that was Trekkie. Trekkie. They ended in E. I'm sorry, yeah, Trekkie. I apologize. I apologize. Jeez, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, I think I think that's exactly it. Like outside of the hardcore progression people, I would hazard a guess that outside of the sort of anyone who's shooting for a top fifty, top one hundred, et cetera, et cetera, is probably gonna be in favor of having the nice linear, easy to measure, did they get past this boss or not, like progress thing. But I think the rest of the WoW community, which I would assert is probably the majority, would probably prefer to just have some options. Just like just to yeah. have some options, different things, yeah. different weeks. I mean, especially you know when we when uh, uh, Throne of Thunder came out, uh, one of the big problems was Horadon, and that's the second boss. And it's like if you're yeah. having problems with Horadon and you can't get your ten man team past it because it's kind of built for a twenty five man. Uh, so if you can't get past Horadon, then you're screwed. You're just yeah. stuck there forever, and it's and it's so uh, painful and and frustrating, and it really brings your team down if you can't get past a boss. But you know, if you have a choice, then you can try him for you know an hour or so, and then you say, you know what, this really isn't working. Let's go grab another boss, and and let's just try that one and see if that one works better for our team. Yeah. Now he also mentioned that uh, Ulduar and Blackwing Descent were really good examples of of nonlinear uh, or, or the right linearity. Would you guys agree yeah, with that? Right. Yeah, the gold. <laughs> I, I definitely I, like. Yeah, I think I definitely think so. I mean, I I really like the way that Blackwing Descent was laid out. I enjoyed that. Oh, yeah. That was a good yeah. one. That was before Cataclysm raiding went more sad downhill. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think so. What do you think, Pat? You're probably more you're more expert on this than me. What do you think? I don't know about expert, but uh, you know, it was definitely, it was definitely fun. I mean, being able to, especially right off the bat, you go, do I go left or do I go right? And then, and then you do both of those and then you go down the little elevator and hopefully pass that boss of the elevator boss. And then you can, then you have a few more. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Uh, so if they can do something like that, that's really kind of open and, uh, and more, you know, challenging from a, Hey, what do you think we can down right now? Perspective. Mm. Uh, then that's that's great. That's awesome. I like yeah, choice. Absolutely. All right, real quick before we move on, I want to take a moment and uh, tell you about one of our awesome, awesome sponsors. But I want to say you have this story uh, up with the story. I don't know if any of you guys out there have heard of an awesome program called RPG Maker. It's great. Remember playing it as a kid? You could make RPGs, and uh, it was it was great. But one of the biggest problems that I always had playing that or, or trying to make my own game was coming up with the art assets for it and coming up with original icons and, and stuff like that. Well, we've got an awesome deal right now going on over at Shutterstock uh, where you guys can get 30% off your order. But it's got this. It's an amazing, amazing tool uh, that gives you a whole bunch of photos, videos, illustrations, vectors. And, you know, like I said right here, I've got a whole bunch of different kind of awesome art that I could apply to uh, some game design. So if any of you guys are out there maybe making some games or, or need any art assets whatsoever for, for your own creative needs, Shutterstock's a great, great resource to go to. They've got so many. It's really simple to use. All you got to gotta do, go up here, is just uh, type in anything you can think of. Like, I want a backdrop of an ocean. I'm just going to type in ocean and whole bunch and now because I have specifically have vectors clipped I'm only getting vector clips but if I unclick that I'm gonna get a whole bunch of even you know photorealistic oceans and palm trees high res low res they offer it all uh, all at different prices for for what you're looking for and it's a great great resource to have 
uh, and we're so happy to have them on as a sponsor. So if you guys um, want to check them out, be sure to head on over to Shutterstock.com and use the promo uh, the promo code GameBreaker6, and you're going to get 30% off your new account. It's a great, great deal. We're so happy to have them on. So check them out, Shutterstock.com. Um, all right, so let's move on and get into some PvP news. Halinka. Oh, wait, I forgot Gary's not here. He can't actually make uh, any yeah. of that audio happen. <laughs> there we go. Um, all right, so Halinka has been tweeting up a storm in response to a video posted uh, by Reinhardt, I believe, Reinhardt hmm. on YouTube, where he basically lays a... <laughs> He basically lays in a WoW PvP. What are you guys laughing at? I'm you awful. and your pronunciation. Why You're can't people just like name your character Bob? Come on. There are people that need to talk about you. Don't spell things weird. Krillumian. That's his actual name. I think that's his actual name, bro. Reinhardt? Oh, uh, well. Michael Michael Reinhardt. All right. Uh, uh, you, got a, you got a hard name, bro. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, he basically lays into WoW PvP, uh, complaining about various aspects of, of how the game and, and where it's at and where it stands. So amongst other things, he talks about PvE gear in PvP, which is obviously a really hot topic for PvPers. In a 30-minute video, uh, it's really long, so obviously we're not going to show it here, but you guys should go check it out. Um, he basically argues that by making PvE gear viable in PvP, Blizzard are annoying all of the pure PvP players. The 1% of the pure PvP players. Uh, <laughs> while pleasing comp uh, a comparatively small group who want to both PvP and PvE. First off, I don't have the exact numbers, but I think that's flipped. Could be wrong. I'm pretty sure there's that more people in World of Warcraft right. that want to do no. both. That doesn't sound right. Well, I mean, either either you, I mean, you know, if you want to just PvP, that's great. That's awesome. Uh, but I think that most people kind of like both. Or that yeah. that's kind of seems to be the mentality for from my perspective anyway. I know. I think there's probably if if I had to sort of guess at it, I would probably say that there's a small a, a a group of people who do just purely PvP and literally do nothing else. I would say there's a larger group of people who do both PvP and PvE with a balance that leans either one way or the other. Like it, either sure. they're sort of PvPers who do a bit of PvE or they're PvE players who do a bit of PvP. But there's a bunch that do both. And I would say there's a possibly a larger number. I'm not sure about how this number would then stack up with the third group who just PvE. Like they don't touch PvP content. <laughs> like I, of the PvPers I know who are legion, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think if I, I think I can think of maybe three or four who are just like, no, I don't do PVE. I don't do. Well, and then they're like, we don't. And then they go out questing and we're like, dude, that's PVE. <laughs> I mean, but let's, let's, even, let's right even turn there. it on its head. We'll look at, we'll look at, as, as you said, live pure PVE players, the, the top <laughs> hardest core of the hardcore, the 1% that was seeing raids in Burning Crusade. And look at what Blizzard's done. Blizzard's opened it up so that people who PVP have the ability to go into LFR and see the raid. So I'm sure just yeah, right. on the other side, PVEers are mad uh, about the same argument. But I think Possibly. that we're, we're seeing this trend because there's a vast community of people who want to do both, as opposed to the very small percentage that are on either ends of the spectrum. Yeah, exactly. I don't, and I don't think there's, you know, there's not that many people who do both very, very seriously. I think that's a small group. Um, but I think, yeah, I, I would be really surprised if the the overlap was as small as Reinhardt makes it out to be. Um, and definitely, I think there's probably far more players on the, hey, I just PvE end. Because I can think of a lot of people who, who I know who PvE, who are like, I never PvP, don't stop making me. All the people, <laughs> think of all the people who were upset about the legendary questline making you win two battlegrounds. <laughs> Think of okay people. wait wait yeah. real quick yeah. real quick i i i'm fine with that and i still agree it should be hard it should be tough but mm -hmm. battlegrounds are the one thing you can't do solo they're the one thing that you can't work on by yourself you can lfr to get your your you to grind out all your drops pve is the one part that i've run into uh, and i passed it I, I went through it and i didn't hate it but i did feel like it was the one part where i was at the mercy of nine other people in order to, to make it happen. Well, I can see where the difficulty comes there. 
In LFR, you're at the mercy of 24 other people, Mike. Yeah. So just kind of watch out what, what you're saying there because no, it is because, a team because sport. It's a team we've sport. Seen, even we've though seen a video where you don't have to do anything in LFR. Solo. You can do, you yeah. can do a, a regular battleground and you can queue up by yourself for one of mm -hmm. those battlegrounds and, and try to win it. Uh, so you don't need a raided team or anything like that, and you don't need a raid team to complete the raid items for the for the legendary no. uh, this time around anyway. And and so, you know, it it is kind of fair, you know, PVE and PVP. <gasps> Gasp! Yes. No way. Yes. It, it's actually <laughs> happening right now. <laughs> yeah, this is a thing. No right. way. Right. Yeah. So, so all the people who have that who have progressed that far through the legendary have done both PVP and PVE. Yes. Pro tip. Shock. <laughs> um, shock. All right, so Malenka had this to say. Uh, we, think P uh, we think this PvE versus PvP gear was a step in the right direction for crossover, but agree it isn't perfect. On the 5.4 PTR, PvE gear hits a ceiling of 512. PvP gear is not scaled down and remains at 522. Disabling PvE gear completely is just not an option wow is an rpg cross as uh wow is an rpg and crossover is important no pvp ghetto so first up just to clarify that little bit of the middle section right there uh what does he mean for item levels we've talked about this before let's just clarify real mm -hmm. fast olivia yeah so um the conquest gear is item level at the moment on ptr this is all subject to change ptr subject to change the conquest gear is item level 522 so that is uh, the Grievous Gladiator's gear at the moment, I believe. And the Honor gear, I actually haven't been able to find item level numbers for it yet. That doesn't mean they're not out there. It just means that I haven't necessarily been able to find them. And so I looked at live, and obviously then the there's a 20 item level gap um, at the moment between the Malevolent and the Tyrannical. And um, if that is continued, that would make the Honor gear 502. So you'd sort of have 502 Honor gear, 512 downscale PvE gear, 522 Conquest gear. So that's that's how that would stack up. So is that an improvement? Because here you're basically saying honor gear is going to be below what the downscale is, then PVE gear, and then conquest gear. Uh, so is that an improvement of the system? I, I don't know. And I mean, maybe it's me being a little bit precious because I I do PVP. That's kind of like, that's kind of my my thing in WoW. And and I kind of feel like it should be raid gear should be more entry level. So I don't think yeah. it should be like, I think it should, I feel like, and again, this is subjective. This is, a, I'm using the word feel because it is a sort <laughs> of, I feel like this should be the case. I don't have lots of logical arguments to back it up, but I feel like, you know, because and particularly when you look at it the other way around, taking PVP gear into raids, it's if the item levels stay the same. Um, and I think it might have already changed actually, but the, the raid finder gear is worse. Like your conquest gear is worse than raid finder gear for PvE. Right. So the very best PvP gear is worse than the entry level PvE gear for PvE, whereas the entry level PvE gear in PvP is better than Don't get lost. The, like oh, Jesus. <laughs> better than the starting <laughs> PvP gear. And it's just like that seems a bit that seems a bit off kilter to me. That seems a little bit unbalanced and I feel that that's uncool. And as a raider, I will say this much. Uh that I think that you are absolutely right. I think that I think that PVE gear should be below what you're. I mean, because the honor gear, you still have to buy that stuff, right? Yeah, it still costs so, honor. I mean, you're, you're still buying it. So I mean, anything you buy should be better than stuff that you get from a different part of the game. I mean, it's yeah. not even it's not even this, uh, anything similar. So uh, other than you still use spells. That's that's the similarity. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, you should be able to, when you spend your honor, you should have confidence that that honor is being spent wisely instead of saying, oh, no, bro, I got to go do some, uh, some heroics, some heroic raiding before I step into PvP so that I can, you know, just get that one up. On yeah, exactly. Else. And that's it. Like, you don't even have, and obviously set bonuses. Like, set bonuses are a consideration right. here. But, you know, that... People have been saying it so far, and I, I kind of agree with them that, you know, if you're thinking, oh, I've just got myself a fresh level 90, should I, A, go grind out honor doing PvP in order to do PvP in some battlegrounds, go grind out some honor, or should I run LFR? Like, and that's, that's not a decision that you should have to make. Like, no. you should, the right answer to that question should always be, oh, I'll grind out the honor. 
And right. sure, I mean, actually, realistically, because the, I suppose the counter to that argument is it's much more reliable to grind out on a gear than it is to go into LFR and try and get drops, because obviously, you know, drops are random, et cetera, et cetera. There's, but there's many other ways to gear for PvE. And that shouldn't be a question that people ask. It should always be the case that the, mo the route that, that does PvP is the superior route to gearing for PvP. Right. Yeah, it seems, it seems really wonky to me that that, um, that would happen. Um, and so it's just kind of, it's the whole, the whole, uh, gearing system has just kind of confused me a little bit, this entire expansion, actually, mm. I've just been kind of like, it's for PVP, I should say. Um, and so it's always been like, okay, so what's best? What, what is it this week? What's going on? <laughs> and so, and so now, now I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'll just stick with my PVE gear and see how quickly I get killed. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, the which is still pretty resilience. quick, by the way. Uh, yes, still because very, of PvP quiet. power. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that obviously with the conquest gear being item level five twenty two, and um, if they if they maintain these item levels, PTR, PTR, um, then it's going to result in people who are conquest geared being pretty strong compared to people who are PVE geared. Can I just but say guess what? real That's quick? Fine. Can guess I just what? say re real quick That's for a second fine. during during my legendary quest endeavors in <laughs> PVP, I had a death knight come up and smack me for three hundred and thirty thousand. And that was just not, that wasn't even the crit. That's my whole life. He one shot me. Uh, Don't tell, like, wow. PvP or, PvEers do not stand much of a chance against well geared PvP players. So just they don't, stop. They, yeah. <laughs> they don't, they definitely don't put out much damage. That's, that's definitely right. true. I mean, PvP power is a big thing. But wow, I'm, I'm exceedingly, did you definitely do that legendary quest after patch 5.3 where they brought in base resilience? I did it just last weekend. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, 330,000 damage. A 330k damage hit through resilience. This is pretty good. That's some pretty hefty old damage that that DK was putting out right there. Ridiculous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's move on here. Skeptical face. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm telling you, it happened. I was blown combat away. Logs, I should have screenshot it. Didn't it. Happen. Right. <laughs> Um, another thing Reinhardt talks about is that the introduction of what he calls ranked skirmish. Uh, he asserts that kind of along with the merging of battle groups, this would provide a fun place for PVPers to learn and practice on alts. Uh, Holinka responds by saying, want a solo queue solution, but DPS, uh, want That's a solo queue right suit, want, oh, no, it's That's not, right want a solo queue, uh, uh, solution, but DPS healer ratio is eight to one, not one to one, or even two to one. Need right answer and prioritize appropriately. Um, I'm just gonna say what, Olivia? Can you say that for me real quick? <laughs> yeah, what? The what? what? Well, it was a this bit. Is... It is a bit. It is a bit. What? I I, I agree. It was maybe not not the very very best. I mean, look, the Blizzard tweets this evening have been a bit sort of like with the not super not linear, not super right, non-linear, right, right. and then this one with they're owning the Twitter tonight. And um, so he wants the, the solo queue solution is basically skirmishes. So something you can queue up for by yourself. But he's saying that because um, you've got so many so many more DPS and healers, it's going to be difficult to match people up with healers. Um, so they need the correct answer to that situation, as in what should they do, because this is the these are the facts. What should they do? And then they need to prioritize their um, solutions appropriately. All right. So do you I guys think. like the idea of? <laughs> I, I'm still. I, I'm still just what? Uh, I, I gotta but, get it. That's my <laughs> translation. That's my translation. That's the best I can do. <laughs> Do you well, guys she knows like the idea? She tweets Halinka all the time, so I do. I <laughs> she, she, all the time. She's learned to stalk she, that guy. She knows like how, a his speech pattern and everything. She, it's great. She's yes. learned. She's learned how to read within the 160 <laughs> character Twitter limit, and she understands <laughs> right. the 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 words that are in between there that, that draw the, I mean, the whole right. picture. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, what do you guys? Do you guys like the idea of solo skirmish? Sco, s scolo. Solo <laughs> skirmish cues. Scola man skirmishes. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. That's like man skirmish cues. Right. Yeah. I, I, Scola man. Yes. Scola yes. man skirmish cues. <laughs> I, I love the. I, I don't think it's. I don't think I've made any secret about the fact that I would absolutely love to see the skirmish system returning. So not just the solo queues, but the other, you know, the group, the group queues as well. Like the, but to have a solo queue is just like, you know, when you're sitting around, like I often do, sitting around waiting for your, your team to come on. 
you know, either you're running in circles, which is my general thing. Actually, I jump from <laughs> tile to tile in Shrine. Oh. I jump little patterns in the tiles in Shrine. <laughs> That's what I do when I'm waiting for my arena team. But That's I could great. be doing skirmishes. I could be doing skirmishes <laughs> in that time rather than jumping. And I mean, I'm very good at jumping. It's something I enjoy. <laughs> but I could you be doing what? skirmishes. And it's fantastic. <laughs> it would be brilliant. Oh. And you, you're a shaman. <laughs> I, I, gi I give you advice as a feral druid that plays a cat. You need to do that in wolf form. It's a lot more fun. Yes. You, you feel, you feel so much form. more at one with the game when you're doing that as an animal. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, or or you, you run around, you go run around, you find like a, 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 a rat running around, you like go jump on it, like you pounced it. Or is that just uh -huh. me? That mm -hmm. might just be me. Mm -hmm. That's just you. That's just you now. That's all you. Here's here's what uh, I do though, guys. I, I go to I go to Shrine of the Seven Stars and and I find those you know those four trees that are kind of walking around. I change into tree form and I go walk with those guys. And they're my body. Be a part of the crowd, blend so, in. You know? Yeah, yeah, Your exactly. Entourage, just and, then, like... and then if I want to feel like I'm the president of them, I switch into that big broccoli tree form and then I walk. They around know what's up. Then you're the boss of yeah. those trees. Yeah, you own those trees. Yeah, exactly. Now, now, Pat, I know, I know how much you play PvP. Like you're you're mm -hmm. all over that. You're you're in all it all the time. In, in no, never or do hardly you, ever. <laughs> do you think? Do you think a system like this, uh, if it existed, uh, you'd get a good mm -hmm. taste for PvP and, and jump in and try it? Um, I, I think it might be a little bit intimidating for somebody like me, uh, because I like to go in with people that I know, and so that they can they can attest to how uh, much I suck at PvP. Uh, but uh, no, I, I I like going in with friends. I mean, that's kind of always my my mo. Uh, but uh, I could see how this could be a viable option for a lot of different players. So uh, if they did something like this, that would be really cool, and I'm sure that a lot of people would really like it. Uh, me, probably not so much, but or I wouldn't use it a lot anyway, or might I might try to dabble in it, in it, but that would be about it. It wouldn't be much. Um. So so, Livia, why why is this DPS to healer ratio a problem for solo queues? Well, funny enough, that actually, that's the question I was asking myself whilst reading and rereading that tweet is, so, I mean, I guess if they're doing specifically, I mean, I don't, I, I don't quite understand where he's got that sort of, this is a problem. Like there's plenty of comps, which are two DPS, like particularly in twos, I see two DPS all the time and right. there's like, they can do pretty well. Like it's not just sort of, oh, guaranteed loss against a healer team. And um, it's sort of, I was a bit baffled by it. And yes, sure, like you could get frustrated with constantly being matched with DPS. But I think, I don't think that's a problem. I mean, for threes, like, you know, there's, there's the extent where they like sort of ban them from tournaments because it's seen as cheating to play triple DPS. It's just sort of like, um, I, yeah, I, I, I can see why he's sort of saying, okay, no, we need to have healers in this. But I don't think that it's the end of the world to have a bunch of like, pure dps comp i'm a bit confused by it hmm. all right and so for a, moving and on. for a skirmish does it for a skirmish does it really matter i mean well indeed yeah that's another valid point like like for a, like something that's you know ranked but like casual does it really matter if you're not in an optimal comp i right. mean are they going to expect it to be you know like matching you with oh well i, I like wrote rmp please I, I would like an rmp i would like to do this particular comp and no that's not how it's going to work it's just going to it's just going to mix it up. And can I just get, can I get like the battleground yeah, look, uh, avoidance look, system? Sorry, can I get that me, for arena let me, teams? No, let me just jump in because <laughs> Helinka is in chat saying that actually he's specifically talking about the solo queue for 3v3, hmm. which does make a bit more sense then. Because it's better. It is definitely superior to have healers in 3v3, but he's still triple DPS comps. Aren't, it's not the end of the world. Sure. As long as, as long as it's pretty even, I think that it would be fine. Yeah, so. exactly. We'll see. I mean, maybe they match. Like, maybe they work out a way to match make it within that as well. So, if you've got a healer team that's more likely, rather like, is that what you're going to say about the match making in battlegrounds? Am I jumping on your? Am I stealing your thunder? Shaft? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! I'm sorry. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So moving on. Uh, but real quick, before we do, you guys, uh, you, you guys, got, have you gone out and made that game that I told you you should go make and use, you know, uh, use Shutterstock well, so we'll, for all of your assets? We're watching Legendary. Because, because if you have, you're going to need a place that you're going to want to publish it and make it public. Why not use a website? Maybe you're not making a game. Maybe you're just a blogger. Maybe you're making videos. No matter what you do in this day and age, you need a website. Where do you want to go? Well, the easiest place is Squarespace.com. 
head on over to squarespace.com. You guys can actually get a, a whole entire professionally designed website with just a couple clicks. It's really easy. You just you click started like I just showed you guys. You can select a template, you start your free trial, and you get a free domain name. It's, it's like GoDaddy, but it's giving you a website. And you've got a whole bunch of awesome, awesome templates here that you can choose from. So, you know, hey, I'm a photographer. I want to use Ishimoto. And here it is. Here's the website. Uh, obviously, this isn't, you know, customized, but it, but it is kind of the, like this is kind of your layout that you can use. Um, you have a, have a whole bunch of different uh, budgets and, and different views that you can go through. You've got arrows. It's, it's, it's honestly the closest thing you can get to a professional website with, with next to no coding required. Uh, super simple to, to switch out. I think if I go into one of these new ones, uh, as you can see, the well, all of these uh, templates actually have two designs, one for their, their website, and then they also have a mobile version. That is not easy. It is not easy to come up with a mobile working website that, that changes the perspective for you, uh, and, and Squarespace allows you to do that. So guys, if you have not checked it out or are at all in need of a website, check out squarespace.com. If you guys head on over there right now, we're going to, uh, we're actually got a special deal to give you 10% off if you use the offer code GameBreaker6. So Squarespace, guys, uh, we're so happy to have them on as a sponsor. Please, please, please go check them out. All right, moving on here, back to World of Warcraft. Uh, we knew it was just a matter of time before we saw some explanation of this crazy buff that we saw last <laughs> week. Olivia and I are about to duke it out. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the patch notes are finally here. <laughs> So if you guys don't recall, we spoke last week about a buff. Uh, there, there was a buff that basically found by a player that gave you a thousand additional damage and percent, made you a immune thousand percent, a thousand percent, percent additional damage. That's like that that three hundred and thirty thousand <laughs> hit from that death knight. <laughs> I don't even want to know yeah. the kind of damage he'd be doing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and it also makes you immune to damage. So it's basically a tiebreaker yeah. or, or it's the tiebreaker. So, um, we knew from Holinka's tweets that this wasn't the tiebreaker itself, but kind of a match ending mechanic. Uh, and the tie break has now been clarified. So let's see here. Four arena matches lasting longer than 15 minutes. One of the teams will receive a buff called the crowd chose you that increases damage, critical strike, stealth detection, reduces damage taken. The buff is awarded based on the following criteria team with the largest number of players alive. <laughs> <laughs> team that brought an enemy closest to death, lowest health. All right. So first up, Olivia, it looks like you win this argument of they should have won, <laughs> but they shouldn't um, have won. Uh, so first up, did arena matches just get even shorter? 15 minutes. I think the, the, the hmm. original tiebreaker, the, the match would end uh, at 20, correct? So it's effectively now mm -hmm. five minutes shorter. Yeah, but that's, I think that's fine. I don't think that's, like, I don't think that's the end of the world. I think that's, that's absolutely fine. It's 15 minutes, why not? Sure, fine, whatever. <laughs> Most of them are over by then anyway, in some way, shape or form. No, they're not, because if you get that really awesome <laughs> priest who doesn't die because he's that good and can stay alive you against three DPS, I am brain, mad. Mike Chaffner. I you am mad. You are that priest. You're that priest for everyone. You're just, you're all about that priest. Hey, hey, if I can stay alive and you can't priest. kill me, you don't deserve to win. <laughs> hey, hey, if you couldn't keep your friend alive, then maybe right. you didn't deserve Well, maybe to he win. was stupid and ran around a corner when he shouldn't have, all right? <laughs> I couldn't life your grip him. Team. Maybe it's right. your team, and right. maybe you should keep them alive, hey? <laughs> hey? All right, maybe so that's this, this debate can go team. on and on and <laughs> yeah. on. Uh, oh, but we talked a lot I about this, will. so <laughs> it will. Trust me, this, this is not the end. We'll keep talking about this at some point. What do you guys <laughs> think of this system? Are you okay with a 15-minute match? I mean, Liv, you kind of say that, that you're okay with them being shorter. Yeah, um, I'm okay with it. I, I, at least I, I do like that it's not it, it it is a system it's not something that it's just like the crowd chose you throw the dice i know you yeah. only had one person oh, alive yeah. but guess what you just that won be, that would be horrible <laughs> yeah that would be, that would be horrendous <laughs> be like, that would just oh. be <laughs> be great RNG. that would mm. be great then the one healer who's just trolling three dps or whatever and doesn't die and is like oh i just oh. won take that nope, right. 
right. Yeah. All right. So yeah. that's that's not I the case, I, though. I, I think it would be quite funny. <laughs> find, obviously, then I would start losing rating, and I would be so angry. But I think, like, I find the concept quite funny. So, what do right. you guys think of this? What do you guys think of the system? The way that it's built, the way that it works. Are, are, do you guys approve? I'm okay with it. Uh, you know, I think that I think that you know, coming from the outside a little bit uh, for this tiebreak method or this you know this game ending move uh, thing, I think that that feels okay because this is a team sport. This isn't uh, this isn't about uh, how long you can just survive. It's it's if you can dominate your opponents, and uh, and clearly if somebody's dead, then you did something right. If you kill them, if they died on your watch, then it's your problem. You know, so I, th I think that this will be just fine. I, I think it's, you know, one way to make sure that it doesn't end in a tie. And I think that that's probably the, the bigger uh, problem that they've uh, that they've been facing with with uh, Arena. So, yeah, know. that's reasonable. Yeah, it's reasonable. I think it's definitely good to avoid t ending in ties. I mean, it's just like particularly if you've killed someone on the other team and it's like then it goes to a tie. It's just like, oh, for God's sake, this is really, really annoying and tiresome and rubbish. And I hate it. And so I'm not. I think the shorter time is fine. I'm, I'm really, I'm fine with that. I'm not, I'm not bothered by that at all. I'm not sure about. I'm. I play a healer. I play a, I, like my, I play a bunch of different classes in arena. Only ever one spec per class because I'm, I'm terrible like that. I don't know why, <laughs> but that, that's just how it goes. And, and I, you know, I play a resto shaman as my sort of main PvP character. And, like, I feel like this is slightly like. Particularly, okay, the, the one which is the, the team with the, um, sorry, the team that brought an enemy player closest to death. I can see the logic behind it, but one of the sort of things about being a PvP healer in arenas is like, oh, I just saved that person. They were on 1% health, and I just pulled them back from the dead, and I'm just like, oh, God, nope, yes, this nope, is really fun. you don't fun. deserve to win. You don't deserve yeah, to exactly. win. exactly. <laughs> And it's just like it's just like oh, okay. So that just like the fact that I managed to save my opponent from my, my opponent, my teammate from certain death at the hands of my opponents, and um, because I let him get low, that counts against me now. And I'm like, hmm. but what about the? But you got to think about it. You know, what about the other healer uh, on the on yeah. the other team? They yeah. kept their team up uh, at a higher percentage than you did. So get out of here, loser, Presto <laughs> Shammy. Get out of here. He, and, and, yeah, I mean, you're a loser. <laughs> I think for for one, I think this is this is really gonna put discipline priests at the forefront because oh, yeah. discipline priests mm -hmm. have the ability not only the ability to, to keep people alive, but because they yeah. have the ability to turn and switch in DPS, for a moment you can go three DPS, get at someone really low on health, and then turn around, switch and turtle for the rest of the match, and then you're you're potentially mm -hmm. fine. I think that's that's a little bit of a concern that that's that might end up happening here in the, the arena world, but um gosh, I don't know, like <laughs> do you feel devalued at all olivia here in the situation now now as a healer does it's, this it's like i don't know it's it's like and i can totally take i take pat's point on board and it's a very it's a good and it's a fair point but it's just i i at least they when when brian was originally tweeting about this the conversation he had with a guy called cutie paws who's one of the admins on arena junkies um was the team that did the highest damage would win and that really didn't feel good as a as a sort of principally PvP healer. Like it shouldn't just be calculated off damage. Like I felt like that that kind of sucked. Um, right. So this is definitely better than that. Um, but it is it's just still, ugh, it's so difficult. It's, this is the argument that Shaf and I had last week, and it's yeah. such a philosophical discussion. And yeah, okay. So if you brought an enemy player closest to death, but you still didn't kill them. You know, grats on not quite killing someone, <laughs> you know, and it's just, oh, it's like the it, it, sort of the theory behind the whole thing of like, if you can't wipe out their entire team, you don't deserve to win. And this is, again, this is the debate we had last week. So if you're a healer who was, you know, they put you in a really, really awesome CC chain and then you manage to break out of that in time to just like literally reach in and throw it, like throw down a spirit link and just save the day for your opponent, then that shouldn't count against you. I mean, it's well, just but, like, okay, then you shouldn't let yourself get CC'd and, you know, you should play better and you shouldn't let them dip that low. Oh, it's so difficult. Goes down the it's, rabbit hole. It right. does. It's just like, when it's, oh <laughs> man, I would not like to be in, in Brian Helenka's shoes making these calls. But all, yeah, but all things being, all things being equal, how do you make uh, a, a fairly simple judgment? You know, you got to make it simple. You got to make it easy to understand. So it's not going to be based on, on damage, which is, 
Great, hmm. because then you get, then all of a sudden you're looking at your meters instead of uh, trying to yeah. kill your opponent, and that's no good. Uh, and you could try to but, do it on all sorts of different factors. What is the easiest factor that people can judge pretty quickly uh, for themselves over the course of the match? As and much I as think I that, that kind of yeah. strikes a strikes one part of it pretty well. Anyway, yeah. The thing though is, yeah, as much definitely. as I as much as I disagree with you though, Olivia, is the fact <laughs> that um, w w I think this this feature the the, the 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 lowest health factor should almost shouldn't be in there. I because yeah, I because I completely agree with where you're coming though. from. What's like, that? You know, if you it's like say say I mean, like I, I'm arguing with myself basically, but I can see the logic of it because if you if your if your partner gets down to one k health and their person gets down to five k, the opposition still nearly won more than you nearly won. But why <laughs> why does it why does there have to be like? And here's the thing: why don't they go to if, if it's a drawn out twenty minute tie? No rating mm. loss across the board. That is a that is a stalemate tie, no loss. But if yeah. but and, and I disagree with you still on on the idea of giving this debuff to someone. But if they are going to, why not just avoid the fact that it gets activated um when when there's three people up or 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 or, or have it only activated yeah. after one person goes down. You you kill someone, then you have then then it can be activated at the 15 minute mark. Because mm -hmm. that I, I think that controls a little bit, uh, a, a little bit, a little bit more um, for yeah. for the reason that you're stating of, of once someone's down at that point, you're just mm. you're just trying to look for for an excuse to to maybe come back and win. But there there are such good stalemates between good teams who are managing their cooldowns right, using their DPS yeah, all at the right time. Yeah, but it encourages it encourages turtling as well, and that's the whole thing. That's the whole problem they're trying to work out here is the teams that turtle, and you know the people who do troll the other team and just draw a match that was ended. In, that should have ended in the first ten minutes. That draw that out. Like that's what that's what they're that's what they're trying to figure out here, and that's what they're trying to fix. And if if there's no penalty for doing that at all, like no rating loss, then people are just going to do that even more. They're just going to just going to draw matches out. Like, oh, it's so tricky. <laughs> but then on the other, oh man. I just we'll I, I'm, gonna have, I'm gonna have to stop talking about this soon. My head's gonna explode from like the, all the counter arguments inside. It. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll move on to a viewer question then. Um, so moving on, viewer questions. Uh, if you guys actually have any, remember every week we answer your questions right here. So keep an eye on our Facebook or send them to submit at gamebreaker.tv. We also love video questions, audio questions. So send those over as well if you guys have them. We always always want more. So first up. Uh, it looks like we also have an audio feed for this, so... Hi, my name is Robert, and I'd like to ask you guys at Legendary, what do you think can be done to encourage players to roll as tanks? It's obvious to me by the long queue times that there is a lack of tanks, but instead of working on that issue, it seems that the Blizzard developers are creating more scenarios which work around the lack of tanks by not nading them at all. I've noticed a lot of scenarios put out lately, and I for one would like to voice my disappointment with this, Scenarios all feel too Wrath Dungeon-like to me. By that I mean everything just gets aoe down. Thanks for your thoughts, guys. Fair argument. I mean, I just recently ran a, a bunch of heroic scenarios and tanked it as a feral DPS cat. Now, granted, I went in bear form, but sure didn't feel like I needed to get grab a tank for that. <laughs> no. Um, no. What do you guys think? It's it's interesting because you know when you're talking about things like uh, you could look at even LFR um, where the tank queue can uh, you know it depends it, it, at first it was like oh my god you're a tank you're going to be waiting in line forever and now all the tanks have just decided you know what let me just go in as DPS it's fine I'm not worried about it too much and then a tank goes away and then I, I don't know I mean it's it's either there's too many or there's not enough it, there's never just the right balance of tanks. <laughs> When you need them, Goldilocks are there? Moment. That Goldilocks right. tanking moment right. that is just perfect. It's just in the middle. That's right. But I do think, like, I think that, and I remember Bashiok tweeting about this a while back that they they were trying to work out ways to to make to get more tanks. That it was a problem. It was a problem that they recognised. And I mean, I remember thinking this back then, and I sort of still think this in response to um, Robert's question. I was like, just do more five mans. Like that's where you learn to tank, and they can right. do. We spoke about this last week. They can do proving grounds. I mean, and I, 
But does that incentivize people to be a tank more? I mean, I don't, I don't just, just go, just go I mean, do. Exactly. Like, why would you, if, unless they award something apart from glory, like, I mean, maybe you could learn the sort of pure basic fundamentals of tanking in there and that might help, but there's got to be a reason to tank. And if there's no, there's no like new gear to be got from doing five mans, then why would you bother doing five mans? And like, right. are you going to go like realistically? Are you going to go from being a solo tank in Proving Grounds who's kind of doing okay? And it, would it not be incredibly daunting to then go into the Raid Finder? And tanks like, have it know, so bad in Raid Finder. Like, oh, day one man. of Raid Finder, you <laughs> yeah. don't want to be a tank. Whoa. Uh, no, you do yes. not want to be a tank in day one of Raid Finder because it's whatever happens, it was your fault. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Good That's luck right. with that. But yeah, imagine going from so 5.4 drops. You're like, oh, Proving Grounds. Hey, I'll take this warrior that I have that I've not really been doing much with. I'm going to spec tank. I'm going to spec prot and I'm going to go do some pre Oh, hey, I'm pretty good at this proving ground thing. Doing pretty well. Raid finder. And uh, never plays again unsubscribe. You mean, you mean rage finder? <laughs> rage that's, I mean, finder. That's, that's about it. Because uh, it, you find all sorts of rage in there. They usually uh, against the tank. That's true. <laughs> especially, if, especially if you yeah. wipe. More than so once. Meaningful, meaningful five mans is what I think they should be doing for this. Five mans yeah. that will give meaningful rewards will encourage yeah. tanking. I, I do think that, you know, there's a, and they've commented on this, that there is a lack of five mans in, in game right now. And, and when they, they, they also announced that there weren't going to be any new five mans for five, yeah. three or five, four, or the rest of the expansion, uh, the WoW community in general just kind of sighed and they went, <sighs> That's not what I wanted to hear. <laughs> yeah. not, so not what I wanted to hear. Yeah, indeed. Uh, but, you know, I, I think that uh, with this, uh, you learn and grow, and hopefully next time around we'll be able to see some more five-man content drop uh, throughout an expansion in kind of a balanced way that, that makes sense uh, so that uh, people who are bringing up alts or people that are new coming into the game can learn, practice, and become whatever spec they want to be. Yeah. All right, so next up, Rod <laughs> McGlashing wants to know two things. First, we all know Pat's answer to this one, but will Virtual Realms, uh, but with Virtual <laughs> Realms coming, what will Blizzard be able to do? If anything about the inevitable increased, uh, if, if anything about the inevitable increased lag in major cities zones due to increased number. Second, currently we are allowed 11 tunes per realm with the VR Will we now be limited to 11 tunes per virtual realm? Uh, will we now be able to have more than 11 tunes by playing on other realms within the same virtual realm? Pat. Is my answer still going to be, I believe they've thought about it? Um, Olivia. Is, is that the, is, is, I believe they've thought of that. <laughs> that's right. No, I, it, depends, it depends on how this all kind of, kind of comes about. Because are they going to be just doing this with uh, lower population realms? Are they going to be tying it with, with higher population realms? Mm -hmm. How exactly are they going to, they going to fuse these different, uh, these different realms together? Um, so I think there's still a lot to be uh, learned on, on that end of things. As far as the amount of tunes that you can have on any particular fused realm, oh my gosh, I think we'll be able to double our players or triple them or whatever it is. Uh, so I'm kind of, uh, I'm not really excited about that because I think 11 is kind of a lot. <laughs> but uh, but it, it, it's looking that way anyway. So yeah, Olivia, what do you think I... they're going to do about the lag uh, in major cities and zones and whatnot? I think they've thought of that. <laughs> that's what i think <laughs> thank I think you they thought of that i think thank you. i don't i don't know enough about <laughs> servers to be like oh well what they're gonna do is they're gonna take all the internet and put it in this box and that'll fix everything i don't know <laughs> i don't know what they're gonna do like what are they gonna do about it stuff that they'll, they'll, they'll do stuff right. that they've already thought of that, stuff that's and things stuff, stuff and also things right that's what will happen and <laughs> As far as the second half of the question goes, I think I think that's more interesting. I think, yeah, maybe they will increase the. They, I hadn't even thought of that had not even occurred to me of like the how many how many tunes can you now have on one virtual realm, and yeah, maybe lots, maybe more, right. maybe you can make an army of death knights. 
Death Knight yeah. army, ar- you already army, can. army, army of the Death Knight. Yes, you can already make an army of Death Knights, but not, all, not all on the same realm as your other eleven characters. All right, no, last well, up, <laughs> last up here, Mark <laughs> Weintraub <laughs> wants to know: Do you think Blizzard will ever offer the annual? <laughs> what? Uh, your pronunciation. I can pronounce it the way that I want to. <laughs> Wish upon a wine scheme. Mike, I'm sorry. Mike, wine it's so trout. precious. It's so precious. <laughs> it's wine. It's wine trout. <laughs> wine trout. Ah, <laughs> oh, Michael, you're so I precious. Should've, I should have put pronunciation <laughs> guided. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> spell it phonetically, Olivia. Phonetically, break it down I to the pure in the notes. You can spell it phonetically. Yes. yes. <laughs> Do you think that no, Blizzard no, will ever offer the annual pass again? If so, what would you like to see in it? All the Titan, betas. Titan. Uh, and Titan. Titan. The Titan Alpha, the Titan Alpha I, and all the betas. <laughs> yeah. That's what I want. That's what I'd like Everybody. to see in it. <laughs> I, well, I mean, there's a new Diablo 3 expansion coming out, isn't there? So, right. maybe that. Or Hearthstone. Oh, yeah. They can always tie it with Hearthstone. They could tell it with Hearthstone, but how would yeah. you, you'd have to buy, uh, how would they do that? You'd have to buy a certain number of cards per month or something? That would kind of, I, that would feel I, awful. Like, I mean, I feel like the, 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 the annual pass came out as, as something that was to keep people playing World of Warcraft, even though they were going to be trying Diablo for X amount of months. That was, that was the true, yeah. they even came out and said that we don't want to make you choose to so sign up and we'll give it to you for free. Um, hmm. that helps keep subscriptions locked for them and you got a game for free out of it. So I think that there's got to be something that ties in there with we want to offer people Titan and <laughs> by you can you can you can play Titan by signing up for World of Warcraft for another year. I don't know I don't necessarily know if it'll right. work with Hearthstone because it's within the same world. I think they're banking off the mm-hmm. same people playing WoW as that are going to be playing Hearthstone. Well, and it's and it's not the same type of game at all either. So I mean, you'd have to figure out a way to uh, be able to package uh, a bunch of different games. So I mean, it would be it would probably be the entire Blizzard uh, family of 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 games, and that could be interesting. But you know, I don't know if that would make me want to buy the annual pass. But I mean, that, that could be at least uh, a little carrot for people. Yeah. And I think you know whether whether people like I think the Diablo expansion would make sense. I don't know whether people right. would would go for it i mean i would always go for it because like like realistically am i going to be playing world of warcraft in a year yeah 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 <laughs> if i was going to be playing world of warcraft in a year and they'll also give me a free thing right that, sign me up yeah exactly <laughs> exactly and we and we have to play world of warcraft because titan doesn't come out until 2016 yeah exactly so the next annual pass is not coming until 2016 that's right there you go you heard it here first <laughs> 2016 annual pass there we go <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! <laughs> All right, Pat Crane. You can follow him right down there at Pat Crane. Unfortunately, I don't have mm-hmm. the music queued up, so just use your imagination. That's uh, <laughs> Be sure to be sure to go check out Convert to Raid. And, Please do, uh, Pat. I guess we'll we'll be. Uh, we might actually. We got we got to talk after this. We might actually have you in yeah. studio next week. Maybe, Ooh. maybe. Maybe I'm gonna be I in La so- La Land. So look out. so lonely, not in the studio. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) And all by her lonesome over in the UK, you can follow Olivia at, well, that doesn't say her Twitter, but at Olivia D. Grace. (laughs) Yes, at Olivia D. Grace. Make me feel Um, less lonely as they all go to LA without me. (laughs) You have your birds, at least. You have your birds. I have my birds. I have my weird, my weird cat. That's right. (laughs) And you guys can follow me right here at Mike Schaffnitz. Be sure to check out After Dark every Tuesday night at 9 o'clock p.m. PDT. That's right. Josh left. We took the time back to 9. That's what you get, Josh. It's not revolving <laughs> around your raid schedule anymore. Uh, be sure to check that out. And be sure to check out GameBreaker.tv for all of your MMO news and information. Guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.